Well, Marvel fans, we just got an absolute metric ton of new information dropped on us about the future Marvel projects. There's good news in here, there's bad news in here, and there's news that's confusing. I'm talking even more updates about Daredevil Born. Again, confirmations of pre-established rumors about the Armor Wars movie and a ton of reports about Marvel delaying projects even further. It is even possible that we might have to wait till 2027 for Avengers Secret Wars? What? But don't worry, I'm gonna break it all down and using the powers of being a gigantic freaking nerd, I'll try to make sense of what's actually true within these reports, what fans should be thinking about, and if we should panic. Smash gosh dang like on this video and let's begin. So first up, let's talk about updates about Daredevil Born Again. It ran in the Hollywood trades yesterday that John Bernthal will indeed be coming back to the role of the Punisher for Daredevil Born Again. Now, now, this is, of course, a report that has been out there for some time. A lot of indications that John Bernthal would be back as the Punisher, but it being reported in the Hollywood trades means it is as confirmed as confirmed can be. So if you're a fan of the character, and why wouldn't you be, this is, of course, cause for celebration. Now, according to other rumors and reports, the Daredevil Born Again series was looking to use the character of Jessica Jones in a really interesting way. She is something of a MacGuffin in the series and Daredevil will be trying to track her down because of something she knows about the Purple Man. But that was very early on and we had last heard that there were scheduling conflicts that prevented Kristen Ritter from coming to shoot on the Daredevil show. And so all the reports before the new ones from yesterday were indicating that Marvel Studios had removed Jessica Jones from the show and had instead replaced her with the Punisher. They were still going to do something perhaps even kill grave related but we're just going to use john bernthal instead but the most recent rumors i'm hearing is that now they've actually figured it out and kristen ritter as jessica jones will actually be in daredevil born again but they're not going to give john bernthal the boot and he will also be in the show so this all freaking sounds great to me and i think another reason that fans should be celebrating this is because john bernthal was on record talking about how he wouldn't return to the role of frank castle under Disney if he didn't think they served the darkness of the character. John, like many of us fans, didn't want to see a disney Punisher. And so the fact that he is coming back indicates to me that Marvel Studios is willing to go dark with Frank Castle, which is a welcome change of tone. However, it's not completely good news when it comes to Daredevil Born Again. As within the trade reports from yesterday, it was also indicated that Foggy Nelson and Karen Page would actually not be in the show. Now, maybe this is just a scheduling conflict with the actors that played these roles in the Netflix show. And perhaps both of those characters will actually pop back up again in the MCU when both of those respective actors get more time. It's also possible that Kevin Feige would just recast these two roles in the MCU down the line, perhaps in an attempt to differentiate the MCU version of the Daredevil character from the old Netflix show. Either way, it's kind of a bummer. I saw a lot of fans online being upset that you won't be getting Foggy or Karen in Daredevil's MCU show. So next Next up, let's talk about this massive info dump that was put out on the Marvel Studios Spoilers subreddit. And this dump of info was split into two parts. One part coming from very trusted sources and another part coming from unverified sources. So we'll tackle all the verified, like really, really likely to happen stuff first. First up, they said that James Spader is coming back as Ultron in Armor Wars. Now, this is a pre-established rumor. A lot of different scoopers and insiders were sort of teasing this possibility possibility for the Armor Wars movie. And so this confirmation on the Marvel Studios spoiler subreddit is just the latest thing that's talking about this. At this point, there's so much smoke for this James Spader thing. I think we could pretty much consider it confirmed that Ultron is going to be in the Armor Wars movie. And that movie having to deal with Rhodey, having to deal with Tony's legacy and all the different crazy technology is really interesting. Now, there's another rumor that says that with 
in Secret Invasion, you're going to realize that the scroll are actually trying to get Stark technology. And this is all because the story of Tony Stark's technology being what actually stopped Thanos and brought everybody back from the snap has spread all around the universe. And so species like the Kree and the Skrull and the Shi'ar and all of these different aliens out there in the galaxy are aware of Stark tech and the Skrulls are trying to invade Earth to get their hands on it. It's also been rumored that Robert Downey Jr. himself as Tony Stark might make some kind of an appearance in the Armor Wars movie, maybe just as AI or a recording for Rhodey. Either way, that's awesome. I can't wait to see James Spader take another crack at the role of Ultron. I think Age of Ultron is an underrated MCU film, but I do agree with fans that they could have done much more with Ultron in that film and just in the MCU in general. Now, next up, they say that Secret Invasion is coming after April, most likely. And I think the only reason that's really significant is it's the first indication that we might actually get Secret Invasion before we get Loki Season 2. I and many of their fans were under the impression the Loki season two was going to be the next Disney Plus show, and then you get Secret Invasion down the line. The next talk about X-Men 97 and how that show is aiming for September, October, and this would be near an anniversary for the original 90s X-Men show. Now, I think the only reason this is significant news is because we were really wondering when we'd see X-Men 97, and with Marvel pushing so many projects back, many thought, wow, it's possible that X-Men 97 will actually get pushed into 2024. But it seems like for now, X-Men 97 still going to happen this year, probably around that September, October time period. Now, next up, and I just want to clarify that this is actually in the verified section of this report, okay? But next up, they're talking about how Secret Wars is going to be pushed to 2028, or rather they say 2028 is the end of the saga, the end of the seventh phase. If they are splitting the final Avengers movie into two parts, then at least the second movie will be in 2028. Now, this follows a ton of different other reports, rumors, and just little things here and there that insiders are hinting at about the fact that Phase 7 might also be included in this multiverse saga, and that you might not see the end of this Avengers arc until 2028. Many people have begun to believe that Secret Wars may be split into two separate parts. Now, that is absolutely possible, but it is also possible that Avengers Eternity War is actually going to be the third movie in this next Avengers trilogy. There are even some new rumors coming out that you're going to get an entire phase of Marvel that is essentially a battle world phase with a ton of what-ifs and movies taking place on Battle World itself. And that may well be what Marvel's Phase 7 actually is. But either way, I just want to double down on saying that this section of information is within the trusted sources part of this report. And I think we've got to take everything in this report with a grain of salt, but we're also about to get into more speculative stuff that is even more insane, and the reality of the situation is I think many people are going to say that Secret Wars being pushed to 2028 or Phase 7 being included in the multiverse saga is more speculative news, and it's not, at least according to this report. But now let's get into that more speculative stuff, the stuff that they have received from sources that are not yet verified. And in this part of the report, they're essentially saying that the slate we're about to get over the next couple of years is going to barely resemble what was announced last year at San Diego Comic-Con. And it's no surprise because we've been hearing a ton of different reports that Marvel is really focused on quality over quantity. They want to spread things out and they really want to get back to capturing the zeitgeist with M. MCU content. They talk about how Loki season two is likely now delayed to July or August of this year, and that might actually affect many other MCU projects. They talk about how we might get a Mephisto Halloween special this year. We might get a Century special, which will be shot with the Thunderbolt movie. And this just seems to be a pattern of the information they got that Marvel's going to be kind of clever with how they shoot some of these specials with the actors and characters maybe already shooting another project. They talk about 
Phase 6 being where you'll see Blade, Silver Surfer, Agatha, Covenant of Chaos, Fantastic Four, Vision Quest, Armor Wars, Young Avengers, Shang-Chi 2, Nova, Spider-Man 4, Strange Academy, Doctor Strange through another Miss Marvel show, and then finally ending with the Kang Dynasty. They then go on to talk about Phase 7 being a Battle World saga. Although not every project will be Battle World, many of these projects will be Battle World. And you've got stuff like Moon Knight Season 2, Midnight Suns, World War Hulk, an Illuminati show, Avengers Secret Wars, which again they say might actually be delayed to 2028, but then they also talk about Avengers Forever. But they mentioned that Avengers Forever may well be Avengers Eternity War, and this is all just speculative stuff based on things they're hearing about Secret Wars being two parts. They also go on to talk about a Nomad project and how this is going to be Chris Evans come back to Marvel Studios and it's going to be the story of him returning the Infinity Stones and honestly I'm going to do a whole video on that but this is likely one of those battle world projects and then the last and maybe most mind-blowing thing that they talk about in this report is essentially an MCU reboot and so they say that after Secret Wars and really that's after the two parts of Secret Wars Marvel plans to basically reboot the entire MCU. And the logic given here is as follows. They say Marvel recognizes no one will want to jump in after Secret Wars because the hours of content could jump into hundreds of hours of content, especially by canonizing all of these other franchises like the Fox X-Men, The Amazing Spider-Man, Netflix and Hulu shows, all of that. And so they say that there's a tentative plan to basically do what they did in comics with the Ultimate Universe, which would be a fresh start universe running alongside the main one in order to get new viewers. But they say that this new universe will have less content than the main MCU, but this might be the beginning of the next universe because they do plan to end the main MCU someday. They also talk about how by the end of Phase 7 or maybe Phase 8, no major characters from the Infinity Saga will be left, with the Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars being their last hurrah. And that is just bananas. That's, that's absolute insanity, but I actually think think there could be some truth to it. So like, what does all of this mean? What's the main takeaway for us as Marvel fans? Well, I think the main takeaway is there's a lot of shuffling going on with Marvel. I wouldn't be surprised if they did delay Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars even further. But at this point, even though this is unverified stuff coming at the Marvel Studio Spoilers mods, I do think that this is just a lot of smoke around this idea of a battle world saga and about phase seven being a part of the multiverse saga my guess is that eternity wars is absolutely going to be a third part to the sort of secret wars trilogy that they're going to do with kang dynasty secret wars and then eternity wars and i mostly believe this because i think it's just a waste for them to do secret wars and the entirety of what secret wars really was in the jonathan hickman secret wars in a single movie i absolutely love the idea of doing battle world movies and taking advantage of the crazy chaotic state that the entire multiverse would be under. And perhaps you can't get any and every old Marvel version of a character to pop up in Secret Wars, but maybe some of them can go do a show. Like imagine a show with Mahershala Ali Blade, but also Wesley Snipes Blade and two blades together on battle world fighting against an army of vampires. Either way, I think that's really cool definitely possible and i hope we get to hear more about it as we get into next year and maybe even the year after that now the last thing i want to talk about in this video and try to make sense of is this whole idea of the ultimates universe and this new universe being set up to replace the main mcu timeline now, this seems like a really wild idea, but we have already heard rumors that they want to streamline the MCU after Secret Wars. And so maybe this would actually be bringing a lot of the Fox people, the Sony people into the MCU permanently. And I think there's still a lot of fun to be had in the main MCU, especially with characters like Doctor Doom 
and the X-Men not really being in the proper MCU, at least until after Secret Wars. So they're not going to reboot it right away. They might streamline it and they still have plenty of juice within it, but I kind of love the idea of them setting up an alternate universe and doing the Ultimates comics for Marvel Studios. And what's really interesting is Jonathan Hickman, who is a writer that Marvel has cherry-picked a ton of stuff from for the MCU, is actually bringing back the Ultimates universe in Marvel Comics later this year. And Feige, being CCO of all of Marvel at this point, has not been shy about explaining that he's adapting things in the comics at about a five-year time gap. So frankly, anything you see in Marvel Comics might end up popping up in the MCU within five years. And that timing kind of lines up with Hickman bringing back the Ultimates and Marvel Studios possibly doing the Ultimates in live action. And I frankly have no idea how you could like do a reboot or end the main MCU and then just prop up the Ultimates universe. Like I don't know how that could actually happen at all in the future of Marvel. But regardless of all that, I'm hopeful that we do get the Ultimates in the MCU. That would be a welcome change. So anyways, guys, that's a lot of freaking crazy info. Some of it I think is absolutely real. Some of it's pretty speculative, but also might end up being real. I'm super curious as to what you guys make of all of this so let me know in the comment section below smash a like on this video if you liked it and if you want to watch more why not check out this video i just did about an incredible twist apparently coming at the end of the multiverse with dr strange and kang